to my international event attendance video, I'm going to be talking about an event that my business fraternity, Pi Sigma Epsilon, put on um, covering Michelle Poole, uh, the USHR lead for Civil Aerospace of Rolls Royce, um, and we called the event um, Rolls Royce of Global Life. It was actually the second in our and our lecture series, we called it the Pi Sigma Epsilon Lecture Series. And our first visitor was David Casey, the Chief Diversity Officer of CBS Health. And we held these events in Pruitt Hall, uh, but the event that we put on with Michelle Poole was strictly covering international business. Um, so I really thought that would be a great, a great thing to talk about for this video. Um, so Michelle Poole was originally from the UK and she now works in America. Um, so not only did she kind of get a little bit of culture shock moving from the UK to America, but she also knows and has a really good understanding of international business because of her experience living in Europe. Um, she talked about in this event um, her, her global experience uh, both personally and from a corporate perspective. Uh, however, I will be talking about more of the corporate perspective just for the sake of this project. Um, in our event, she talked about all the different countries she had been to um, for business purposes. And some of the countries that she named were Canada, Singapore, Brazil, Norway, America, and the UK. She also had a lot of others she talked about. But all in all, she's been to 25 to 30 different countries between per personal and um, work reasons. And one of the things that she talked about that I thought was really interesting um, in the sense of international business was um, something I really didn't think about much was every time that she walked into a meeting, whether she was traveling either globally or even in America because they had a lot of global visitors, was if that person she was meeting with even spoke English. Uh, she said surprisingly a lot of times she would be sitting there and they'd just be staring at her and she doesn't know if they speak English well, if they don't understand her because she has an accent, or maybe they just don't want to talk to her. So that's something that I really never thought about. That would be uh, kind of a huge barrier when it comes to doing business is that language barrier. Um, another barrier she talked about was the culture barrier. And this was a really interesting story to me. I found it a little bit humorous. <clears throat> um, she talked about when she had first come to America from the UK um, for business, a co-worker was not at their desk and their phone rang. So in the UK, what's customary to do then is to answer the phone for them um, because in the UK, everybody's very polite and that's just the norm over there. Um, so she answered the phone for her co-worker and took down a little message on a sticky note about somebody called and this is what they said um, and she let that co-worker know and instead of being thankful or you know just brushing it off like it was no big deal how they would in the UK um, her co-worker was angry and a little shocked that she had done that um, so she talked about just how the culture was a lot different in America compared to the UK in the sense of um, just being polite in general because um, I know I wouldn't just answer somebody's phone, so that's definitely a, a bit of a culture barrier there. Another good example that she gave was um, when she had first come to this said company. Uh, her every her first morning, she said she's going to get coffee. Does anybody want coffee, tea, a drink, anything? Um, everybody says no. And then the second day, she went back, asked, does anybody want coffee, tea, any drink? And everybody said no. And she kept asking, by the fourth day, somebody turned around in their seat and said to her, hey, you know, if we want something, we're just going to go and get it ourselves. And she said that was a really big shock to her because the way she was raised is always ask guests um, or anybody for that matter, if you're going to get something, if they want something too, just because they're polite. She said that if her mother had seen her today, um, you know, behaving like normal Americans do, probably disown her, which was a little humorous as well. Um, that just goes to show kind of that culture shock can really interfere with business. Um, something else uh, 
she talked about was um, the time zone in international business. Um, whenever you're working in a global company um, and you're somebody who has to do meetings or maybe your manager or your boss lives overseas, uh, you're never going to have a normal nine to five job because, um, for example, I don't know, somewhere like Japan, I'm pretty sure they're about 14 hours apart from us. So when we're waking up in the morning, they're going to bed um, and vice versa. So if your boss or somebody that you're meeting with lives in Japan or in a country with a big time zone difference, then you're going to have a hard time um, making sure that you're on time to meetings or you're going to have a hard time planning um, when you're going to have conference calls and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that time zone is another big barrier to international business. Um, something she also said was really, really important for global companies to have is um, a shared services center. Um, so what shared services is, in her definition, is the centralization of transactional administrative services that can be done in one location. Um, so an example she talked about, Rolls-Royce. Um, obviously, they operate all over the world. They're a global company. Um, so in each one of these different countries where they have all their different businesses that operates differently, um, you know, both structurally and culturally. And it's really important to have a shared, shared services sector to kind of help bring everything together and help everything run smoothly globally, not just in these countries, because you want everything to melt together. Um, with that being said, there are also a lot of positives to working globally. Um, she said she has definitely learned a lot, and it's not an experience that she would trade for anything. Um, she loves America. She loves everywhere that she traveled. But um, I did learn a great deal of things that I wouldn't necessarily think of off the top of my head when um, I think about doing business internationally and globally um, from this presentation.